Hey guys, welcome back to the Fool's Show. Of course, I am Foolish Phil. I wanted to give you all my thoughts after Michigan's 82-66 victory over Texas Southern today. This was about as good as I would really hope for. Obviously, it's a 16 playing a number one, but it's not quite that way because the number 16 team got to play the play-in game. So they're a little bit fresher, right? They kind of are used to playing in an arena. They're a little bit more loose. They got a victory under their belt already. And it was great to see Michigan come out in the first half and just get to work. They just started working hard and got a double-digit lead and never let that up. It was great. The first half, you saw great scoring all over the court. Hunter Dickinson was able to get pretty much what he wanted. I really think they should have used him more, but give Texas Southern credit. They doubled him very well. I got to say that Franz Wagner left me a little wanting. He only had six points in the game until he had a clutch three. That was kind of the nail in the coffin in the second half when uh, they were Texas Southern was back within 12. But overall, in the first half, it was great. You had great bench scoring, too. You had Zeb Jackson had six points, two of two of three-pointers in the first half. Austin Davis for the game finished with seven points. Williams had three points. Balance scoring, that's what this team's going to have to have, balance scoring, because you're not going to replace Isaiah Livers. And this team always won through the season with balance scoring. It was great to see Brandon Johns. He got to the free throw line. He had 11 points. Dickinson with 16 points. Wagner with 9. Smith with 18 to lead the team. Just great, man. It's wonderful to see that. And that's what Michigan's going to have to do. They're also going to have to play defense. And their defense was pretty good, especially in the first half. Held Texas Southern to 24 points. As usual, the second half defense isn't as good. But Michigan, again, wasn't really threatened. The lead, like I said, never got to 10 points or less. Michigan goes off and gets a comfortable victory. Now, it'll be interesting to see what changes Michigan does, if anything. I don't really think they're going to change too much, if I'm honest. Because I think you're still going to have John starting and Brown coming off the bench and Davis coming off the bench. And you're just going to have to roll with that. And hopefully people are going to hit their shots, get the, get the ball movement going. i got to talk about that ball movement. Michigan was getting their shots. They were passing the ball wonderfully. 19 assists for Michigan as a team. 19. That just speaks to passing the ball really well and getting high-quality looks. I appreciate how this team will do this. They will pass up a good shot for a great shot. I can think of one play in particular where in the first half, Mike Smith passed up an open three. A, guy, a defender went to him, and he dished off to Franz Wagner, who did a, there was, the lane was opened up. And he went in and just did a nice, easy layup. I mean, you took a good shot and turned it into a great shot. And that's what Michigan's going to have to do. Overall, you can't complain about a first-round win because, as you know from yesterday's upset days, the Big Ten took a, kind of a black eye. I'm not going to, like, poke fun or anything. It's the tournament, but the Big Ten did not have a good day. Purdue lost, Ohio State lost, Michigan State lost the play-in game. Kudos to Wisconsin for really beating up on North Carolina and Rutgers to beat Clemson. Hey, the Big Ten, they were supposed to be the best conference in the country based on yesterday's games. It didn't look like it. But again, you know, different playing styles and such, and it's different in the in the March Madness. That's why you have the March Madness upsets. So, hopefully the Big Ten can keep going well. Hopefully Illinois, Michigan, and the other teams that are alive continue to go well. Iowa's going to play later tonight. Hopefully they'll look good. And hopefully, like I said, the Big Ten can get some momentum going here. Always, you know, you you want the Big Ten Conference to look strong if you can. I'm always kind of like that way, but not every Michigan fan is that way, and I understand. So, it'll be interesting to see how Michigan goes next versus LSU. And hopefully, please don't let that game be a 10 o'clock tip. I work mornings, early mornings. So, late games, 10 o'clock after, will not work very well for me. I could maybe do it, but please, NCAA, have Michigan play LSU at 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 7 o'clock, whatever. Not 10 o'clock. Not 9 or 10 o'clock. No, 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 that's too late. That is too, 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 too late. No, not my decision. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks to all those people who subscribed. I appreciate that. If you guys have comments, put them in the comments box, and I'll try to respond as I am able to. Uh, what do you think about the first round game? What does Michigan have to improve on? What do you think LSU is going to try to do to attack them? 
Let me know what you guys think. As and, and as always, until I see you guys next time, go blue!